I think that Stellar Blade is going to be a good game. And I'm not just basing this off of the trailers or everybody getting really obsessed with how pretty the main character is. I played the demo extensively and then I asked a lot of people what they thought about it on Twitter. And for many people, the demo really sealed the deal and even took the game further than they were anticipating. And I am certainly one of those people. So I wanted to break this video down into a couple of sections for you. First, graphics and performance, then combat then systems and gear, as well as the boss fights. And I will talk about some of the things that they could improve, but then ultimately arrive at the conclusion that I believe Stellar Blade will be a good game. So up first, graphics and performance. Undeniably, games for the PlayStation 5, I think, need to look very good. And this game is on par with what I expect from a PlayStation 5 exclusive, especially when we're no longer on a cross-gen supported game and a game that is only made for the PlayStation 5. This has been a big selling point lately to me of timed exclusives or exclusives in general is that I tend to get a better game. And the graphics, I think, look very good. Now, some people have said the environments are not all that impressive. I don't think that's the focal point. I think the enemy design is fantastic. They're grotesque, but they're also unique and they're very, very cool looking. I think the bosses especially, I'll talk about that in another section, but I think the bosses look very, very cool. That's not including, obviously, the main character her outfits depending on how you want to look yes you can go for something that's very scantily clad and what would be seen as more sexy but i actually think some of the different armor and some of the different sets look really really cool and they actually reflect the light very very well and the way that that interacts with sort of the grotesque and the macabre nature of the enemies that you're fighting i think just looks fantastic beyond the graphics performance this game runs so well I had no major hitches, no snags, nothing. Now, I'm coming from Rise of the Ronin, which is a game that does have quite a few performance issues, especially when you're in the open areas or areas where you're like in a town of there's lots of people around. This game certainly doesn't have those settings. I think that is to its advantage. You're more in sort of linear contained areas. I hope more and more games move toward this so they can increase things like fluidity of movement particle effects, lighting effects, make the game look really good, but also run really well. I don't like when games go too far with this and then you end up not getting great performance. Final Fantasy 16 turns off the dynamic resolution when you're not in combat and the performance tends to look pretty poor when you're in a town or when you're exploring. This game never had a single issue, so nothing but praise for the graphics and the performance. So let's talk about combat. The combat, I think, is the selling point of this game. I've had many people say they're highly interested in the story and the characters. I'll be honest, I paid very little attention to that. That's not really the draw to a game like this. I don't have any issue with the story or the characters, the voice acting. I thought it was all very good. I put it with the Korean voice actors, I think, playing games in their native language. Tends to feel better, and I think it also looks nicer just with the characters talking as if it seems more organic but the combat to me is the selling point now some people got a little snagged on the combat when you're trying to learn how to do perfect parries and perfect dodges you will quickly find out that their windows are very tight and very challenging especially when you first learn perfect dodge the very first enemy that you're able to sort of practice it on it is very very rough and it doesn't seem to be working properly now i went into The skill tree, the environment where you can practice these things. And even in there, where I wasn't even under threat of dying, it just didn't seem to be very consistent. And some people have said that that's a flaw in the game and that they have a similar experience with Perfect Parry. While I do think they could afford some quality of life here, just to make sure it's consistent, because it did seem at times to be inconsistent. I don't know if those were drop frames or latency with my capture card, but there are skills that you can spend to make perfect parrying easier and to make perfect dodging easier. And you get that turned on when you do the boss challenge in the Cellar Blade demo. And in that fight, I definitely noticed I was getting way more of the perfect dodges. There are multiple opportunities to blink. You can blink forward and there's an ability with the purple flash to sort of go backwards. And I think that adds a lot of great layers to the combat. That touches on one of the major points of the combat that I think is just so good, player feedback. I always knew what I was doing wrong. I knew if I misjudged a signal or a telegraph or a light, you know, they use a lot of lighting 
to tell you what to do and when. And every single time, if I made a mistake or I died, I knew what I needed to work on. Even in some of the earlier sections where some of the basic ads will take you to task, that was sort of unexpected. I thought this game was going to be a little bit more of an action-adventure button masher. It's actually a little bit more closer to a Souls-like than I expected. It's not a pure Souls-like. It's not going to beat the absolute tar out of you, but it certainly will put you back on your heels. And I think the reason the combat is so satisfying is because you can invest in those various skills and you can get better at picking up on that player feedback and certain enemies that were beating you up, all of a sudden you're beating them up and you're making them groggy and getting to do retribution on them. That feels very, very satisfying. And the boss fight and the boss challenge, there's a boss fight at the end of the demo and then there's the boss challenge. It really sold me on this game. The combat is the crown jewel of Stellar Blade, and it's one of the main reasons I can't wait to play it. Next, I want to talk about systems and gear. I think this is where I'll have a little bit less to say, but I do think there's a massive amount of potential because not only can you use the systems and the skill tree in the game to really craft your own build if you want to make things like Perfect Dodge and Parry easier, but you can also use your gear for that. This tells me that they have put a lot of thought into the builds and into the things that you can do and the ways that you would like to play. What this means is is that there's a lot of player freedom here. You can even run the skin suit gear. I know people are running that because they think, oh look, she looks like she's naked. That actually takes your shield away, makes the combat significantly more challenging. And if you're familiar with FromSoft games, People that like challenging games, they will tend to do that. They will kind of strip everything down and make it really, really difficult on themselves. And that's where I think this game is really going to flourish. You're going to see a lot of people get behind that idea that they can craft their own build or make things significantly harder on themselves. Because when I first talked about with my stream that, hey, you could spend points to get an easier perfect parry or perfect dodge, they thought, well, everybody's just going to do that. Not necessarily. If you get really good at perfect dodge and parry and you don't feel like you need to spend those skill points, that's four skill points you can spend elsewhere. It's two skill points for each of those to be made easier. So you really can craft your own build with the skills, but then it also sounds like you really can invest in different pieces of gear to make a build and a way of playing this game in your own way. And that's always satisfying when you don't just have skill expression inside of the combat but player volition also express in the combat by way of your own build and your own approach so high praise there and probably tons of potential now the boss fights is something that i really want to spend some time on just because i think this is going to be where the game truly shines because they're big they're gross looking and it's a great juxtaposition against the main character right she looks very beautiful and then these things are just nasty and they're big and they're fast and they look like they're made of pieces of dinosaurs and chainsaws this to me is where the game really started to appeal to me even in the stellar blade trailers now again this was at a time when i really expected the game to be more of a jrpg kind of action adventure style game where I'd have a bunch of abilities and sort of, you know, mash my way through environments as well as boss fights. But something that I love right now are games that are falling into sort of a middle lane. Rise of the Ronin is not necessarily a Sekiro, but it's also not necessarily a Ghost of Tsushima. It's kind of in between. I get a bit of both, and I love both of those games, but I'm not always in the mood for a Sekiro. I'm not always in the mood to get my teeth punched in. And I really feel like Stellar Blade is in a similar spot. It's in a middle lane, and the boss fights really communicated that to me because they can really take up the combat and take up the action, but also make it very challenging. You got tight windows. You got not a lot of room for tons of error and tons of mistakes. And that is so satisfying when you really blend the cinematics and that quality, that movie-like quality of some of these boss fights also then blended with the need to be on point and the need to be paying attention and hitting those parries and those dodges at just the right time. That is the perfect blend. So I think that's going to be a huge, huge aspect of what makes this game so appealing because FromSoft fans can kind of feel that challenge and feel that intensity, but you can put it on story mode or you can keep trying to get better, maybe even build your character to make some of those aspects easier, really making it your own game. But the boss fights to me, they really secured the deal, really makes me want to jump in day one. 
Now, while I am saying that this game is going to be good, and I think it's even probably going to get some nominations for Action Game of the Year, even Game of the Year, it might have the potential to sneak up onto the podium. I don't think it has a chance to win. There's some pretty big contenders already out, but I do think this game stands to get some nominations. There are certainly some things that they could improve. I definitely feel that the camera and the targeting could get a little tender love and care. It didn't quite feel as polished as I would want it, a little stiff and a little awkward at times. And I do think, again, I already mentioned it, but I will mention again, the perfect parry window and the perfect dodge window should just be examined a little bit. I like the idea of allowing the player to spend skill points to make things like that more approachable. But I also didn't feel like it was consistent, and I had many people leaving comments saying, even once you know when to do it, it doesn't seem consistent. It's far too like, do it right at the last minute, which is such a millisecond of opportunity, which really creates a lot of damage that doesn't feel fair, because if you feel like, I hit the button at the exact same time, it becomes harder to deduce what you did right and what you did wrong. I remember I remember encountering that in Wo Long where I couldn't tell why certain parries and blocks were working and why others weren't. This is why Rise of the Ronin has been very satisfying. I feel like it slowed down just enough that I know when I've made a mistake or misjudged a block. And in Stellar Blade there were certainly times where it felt like maybe the game needs a little bit of polish with respect to how that certain mechanic is working. Overall, I don't have any major gripes, and I think this game is going to be really fantastic, which, let me give you my conclusion here. I really do think Stellar Blade is going to be a good game. Far better than I expected. And this is largely based off of the demo, but also based on just the public reception. I do find it a tad annoying that many people are primarily focusing on what the main character looks like. We've seen all the videos of her climbing up and down ladders, but the unfortunate thing is I don't want that to overshadow the quality that this game has. It is a good game already. I can tell the combat, the systems, the depth of what you can do. There's just a lot of thought here, and it is satisfying. Many have said that it looks rigid or stiff. There's a Metroidvania element to this game that I think people are missing out on. I think if they would play through the entire demo and the boss challenge, they would connect the dots that I connected, and they would see that what you put into this game and the building and the thoughtfulness and getting stronger lends itself to the speed and the fluidity you're not going to be like that right away very similar to how you know metroidvania games work you don't have everything in the beginning and you feel awesome when you're at the end and that i believe is how stellar blade is going to go i'd love to know what you think you can leave a comment below do you think it will be good these videos typically roll over into members only content so you can support the channel directly and get into more content if you pick that $6 tier of member that we have. As always, hit the like button. That helps as well. Hit subscribe so I can see you in the next video.